Hi, this is Mrs. Timmons, and today I'm going to show you how to create a record using Dublin Core. The first step is to get to the URL for your project. Hopefully you've been given a direct URL in your project instructions. If not, you can look at omeka.net, not omeka.org. And your project instructions should also tell you the username and password you will use to log in. So go ahead and get that URL, that username and password, and log in. And you will see our dashboard. Before we actually dive in and start creating a record, you'll need to click around and do some investigations and gather some information first. So the first thing I want you to click on is the Collections tab because your item might go into an existing collection. So take a note of the collections that are already there and see if any of them apply to your item. And if they do, make a note of it because you'll use this later. Then click on the Item Types tab, do the same thing, scroll through, look at the different item types. You will need to assign one of these to your item, so it's best to figure out in advance which one is correct. Uh, for our example, the most common, we're going to be using text. Uh, then go ahead and click on the tabs, the tags tab, excuse me, and look at some of the tags. These are basically like hashtags or subjects that have already been created and used in other records. And our goal is to try and keep the same format, use the same tag that someone else has used. So for example, if there's already a tag that says Elizabeth the first, then you don't want to create a new tag that says Queen Elizabeth because then your users aren't all going to be directed to the same place. So scroll through the tags and see if there are any that might be good to describe your item. Um, after you have uh, gathered that information, I do want you to also just search the existing items and see if there's anything in there that's already related to your item. So for example, if you did a transcription of a letter, the original letter may be here in the catalog already. I want you to just go ahead and glance through the record for the original letter and see if there's any interesting information. So for example, you can see where the source was for the original letter and you might want to copy that and have that information available when you create your record for your transcription. There might also be things like relations. These are similar items. Um, those might be things that would be helpful in your record if your record is sort of related to this record. So look around, see if there are similar items, look at what's in there, and see if there's anything that you might use in your item. So after you have done all of that, it is time to actually create your new item. So you're going to go back to that main items page, click the green button for add an item. Now these uh, records are not all required, so you do not have to fill something out in every single box. The records are also repeatable, so let's go through and just do an example. Let's say that I have created a transcription of Queen Elizabeth the first speech to the troops at Tilbury. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and put that in my uh, item title. Now the field underneath subject um, don't repeat exactly the same thing you just did. Subject is not a sentence, subject is actually keywords. So some of the relevant keywords might be Elizabeth I, and it might be something like military, and it might be speech. Those are all sort of major keywords, like you would find in the index of a book, that describe what's happening in this item. And when you have multiple subjects, you're going to separate them with semicolons. All right, now we want to just key in a, a, a good um, description of what's happening. So I'm going to actually um, key in a description, but yours is probably going to be longer. So you're going to want to describe who, what, where, when, and why this is important. Okay, but I'm going to go ahead and stop, but you get the idea. 
All right, creator. So this would be who had the most uh, impact in creating this. And so in this case, it's a speech. I've transcribed it, but I didn't write the words. It was Elizabeth I who was the author. Now notice here it says, when possible, list the last name first. So um, normally uh, you would do, for example, my last name, Timmins, comma, Susan. But because Elizabeth is the queen, we sort of name the queens differently and the kings. So we're just going to actually say Elizabeth I for her name. And there are no other creators. All right, for source. This is kind of where this item came from. And so that was partially why we looked at, we searched around for the items to try and see if there was any information about the original item because in my transcription, I want to relate my transcription to the original item. So any information that I got about the original item, I can add in here. So this is basically the source where this all came from. Okay, um, if this was online, I would also add a URL here so somebody could get back to that URL. So the publisher is who was responsible for making this item available. Because this is a transcription and uh, I, I created it, you created it, you're a student at Harpeth Hall. So you're actually going to list Harpeth Hall School as the publisher of this transcription. But if this was, for example, the original item, the original letter was located in a library. And so for that one, the publisher is the British Library, where that original item was located. But the exact item in this record, it's a transcription that was created at Harpeth Hall School. So we're actually going to credit Harpeth Hall School. OK, the date. The date is not the date that you are uploading this or that you digitized it. This would be the date um, that the original was created. So you definitely want to have a year. And if you have something else like a month and a date, you're actually going to follow the format right there and use a dash for the month and the day like that. So contributor, this is where um, if this is a transcription that was done by people at Harpeth Hall, you would have all the people listed and you would do last name first, first name last. So um, I would do maybe Timmins, comma, Susan, and a semicolon, Pethel, comma, Mary Ellen, and maybe another semicolon, and then I would do Griswold, comma, Meg. So this is how I would add in all the people who um, participated. Okay, so for rights, um, if, if your item uh, was from online and you um, had to use something that someone else created, they might identify the rights themselves, um, whether or not they're going to allow you to use it. So if you're using something from a website, you do want to check and see what their limits are for their rights. However, in this case, because it's a transcription and you created it, you actually get to set the rights for your transcription that you created. And for this, we're going to take guidance from the Creative Commons organization. They have created what are basically public license levels that you could assign to anything that you create so that other people can use your work and understand what you want them to do. So this is attribution, right? So this means that they can reuse your work, but they have to give you credit. Other people internationally are allowed to share your work and even adapt it, but they do need to give you credit. And so we're going to use that. Um, it's called CC by 4.0. And if I use HTML for it, I can actually highlight the text, create a hyperlink, and insert the hyperlink right there. OK, so that's why I provided the URL right here. You can take that URL, click this Use HTML box, highlight the text, CC by 4.0, and then add a hyperlink to it. OK, um, relation is where, again, if there's any extra information that's related to the item uh, that would help the user understand it, you can put that there. I'm not going to add anything. 
uh, format, um, this is the file format or the physical medium. Because in this case I'm not describing an actual scroll or a manuscript that I physically have, I'm describing a file I created. It's going to be a PDF file. It's in English and the type. Remember we looked at item types before, so the type is text. Identifier, we're usually going to use blank, uh, leave blank. That might be something like a file name or a call number for a physical item, but we're going to leave that blank. And then the last thing is the physical geographic description of what is uh, covered in this item. So in this particular item, it's Tilbury, Tilbury in Essex, England, is where this took place. Okay. We're almost done, but not quite. So we've got as many fields filled out as we can figure out, but we have a couple things up here on the top. Um, you don't have to fill this out, but again, we do know that we're dealing with a text item for this particular case, so I'm going to go ahead and fill that out. I'm not going to do anything with these other fields, and I'm going to go right over to File. So again, if I've created a PDF with my transcription, then this is the point where I want to browse and I want to find my file. Okay, we're not going to do that. I'm not going to do that for your sample, but this is what you would do. If you have multiple files, you can add multiple. The almost last step is to add tags. So remember when we look to see what the different tags were and you start typing them in and they'll, they'll crop up, but you do need to know what letter they start with. So Elizabeth the first is a tag. Um, I believe Tilbury is a tag. Um, I don't know, speech is a tag. So I can add those and click add tags and then those will help my, our users find them. Okay, very last thing. Before we click add item, we do want to click to make it public. And remember we looked for a collection earlier. If there is a collection, such as transcriptions, we do want to pick that. Other than that, go ahead and add the item and you're done. Thank you.